How do I score using a lift in Reefscape? Many of the tasks in the 2025 FRC game Reefscape require robots to take one game piece from one location to a higher location on the field. Robots can take coral from ground level or human player level to one of the four levels on the reef. That includes level one, also known as the trough, level two, level three, and level four. Robots can also take algae from the ground or from the reef and deliver it to the processor, which is seven inches off the ground, or the net, which is much higher. Any mechanism that delivers something from a lower height to a higher height should have a low center of gravity so that your robot doesn't fall over while completing this task. You'll also want to simplify your degrees of freedom that this mechanism has in order to simplify what your robot is doing and how it's doing it. We're going to cover a few different types of mechanisms today. Let's start with elevators. Elevators usually follow a path of linear motion where usually they're going to go upwards. An elevator typically built for FRC will be built out of this kind of structure where you, you'll use box tube, bearing blocks, and other things that help the elevator move upwards. Elevators typically have multiple stages that allow them to reach higher. The main stage that you want to pay attention to is your base stage, which stays static on the robot, and your carriage stage, which is where you'll attach your intake or your manipulator. Robots in this year's game may want to use multiple stages because there is a starting height limit for the robot. But once the match begins, there's no height limit for how high robots can get. This means that more stages that you'll have, the higher your robot can get, even to the point where it can reach some of the highest things on the field, like the net. There are many options for teams to construct an elevator. There are some options that are off the shelf COTS parts, and some options that may be better for your team to build custom. Teams that build custom elevators need to know that extrusion is not special. It's something that you can get off the shelf. What is special is the bearing blocks that are offered off the shelf. Andymark has a few options in order for teams to get these parts off the shelf. We offer the powered elevator, which can be seen here in our example. This gives you a few plates and also the power transmission that you will need in order to power your elevator and construct it fully. Animark also offers SDS bearing blocks. These bearing blocks attach to punch tube and give teams the option to decide which amount of stages they want for multiple stages high. This takes the machining out of the equation and allows teams to get the width that they want, the height that they want, and also provide their own gearbox. An elevator can be powered with either string or chain. An elevator can be rigged with string in a number of different ways. The two main ways used in FRC are cascade and continuous. Both give you advantages in terms of simplicity and also what your elevator does. A cascade elevator will have stages move at the same speed on each of them. This is how this elevator is currently rigged. You'll see that we still have some space above the top of the carriage. A continuous elevator will make sure that your carriage is always at the top of your elevator. This gives you more space if you need something at the top of your elevator at all times. If you want more information about rigging an elevator, check out our video, How Do I Use Elevators in First? for more information. Once you have your elevator rigged in a configuration that you like, you need to choose a motor in order to power it. These are going to be your workhorse motors that we use in FRC. Motors like your Sim, your Neo, your Neo Vortex, or a Kraken are probably your best choice here. In order to get your elevator to be powered, you have to use a gearbox, and your gearbox is usually rigged for torque because we want to be able to lift a number of heavy things, including the elevator itself. Lifting an elevator, a game piece, and a carriage, and an intake is a difficult task. It's a lot of weight on one thing. Sometimes, a gear ratio on a motor might not be enough, and you might want to counterbalance anything that might be on your elevator. This is usually achieved by using something springy on the opposite side. Teams have used surgical tubing, constant force springs, and other types of springs in order to counterbalance this. When using constant force springs, be sure to be careful because the edges can be sharp. Now that you have your system powered and your intake designed, your robot will want to know exactly where the elevator is at any given time. Teams will opt to use set points in order to have this work. In order to make a set point, the elevator will have to know exactly where it is on its path. The way that teams do this is by using a number of different sensors. 
Teams like to use encoders in order to determine the position of where your elevator is based on the position of the motor. Teams also use limit switches in order to give you the bottom and sometimes the top position of the elevator. This gives you a quick yes, no, am I in the home position? And if not, keep going down until you get there. Set points require a certain amount of precision in order to go to the correct place every time. Teams will want to be careful how they code their robot and pay attention to the PID loops that they're using. Teams can use these loops in order to be sure that their elevator goes to the same height every time. There are so many examples out there on how to code elevators, specifically in the WPI lab, on how to use an elevator, how to use a PID loop, and how to make sure that your sensors are communicating properly with your robot. Consult those if you want more information. Overall, elevators offer a great solution to this year's Rescape Challenge because they offer vertical extension and are easy to find around and find examples. The challenge of lifting game pieces in Reefscape can also be achieved with a number of different other mechanisms besides an elevator. One of these examples is an arm. Using an arm is one of the most common FRC mechanisms across all seasons. Arms are used in a number of different ways, from intakes to climbers, to even mechanisms that can score things on higher places. An arm is different from an elevator in that it uses rotary motion to achieve putting things upwards, while an elevator uses linear motion in order to achieve the same thing. Teams will have to be careful about where their frame perimeter is and what the extension limit is in order to use an arm properly. There are many different types of arms that teams can use. The most common is a single jointed arm, which means that it has one pivot point and an arm that extends off of that. Other types of arms may be multiple jointed arms where you use multiple joints at different points on your robot. Teams may also want to extend off of that single jointed arm in a configuration that's most often referred to as a pink arm. This allows you to have the extension of an elevator in the linear fashion with the rotary motion of the arm. Teams should be careful about extension limits this year. You're only allowed to extend one foot six inches beyond your frame perimeter, so be careful. Anything that's designed to reach outside your frame perimeter must be designed robustly because you will be encountering other robots, both defending and on your alliance, that might run into these things. Teams may also want to use a linkage mechanism in order to lift things to score in Reefscape. One of the most common linkages is the four bar linkage. This linkage allows you to use an arm, but to have more support on it and to lift more weight. These are commonly seen in FRC and are the most common linkage that you'll see out there on the field. These mechanisms, while they allow you to reach higher than an arm and give you more support, may not be the right choice because of how wobbly they are and how unstable it may be in order to score the game piece in such a precision game as Reefscape. As with your entire robot, teams should think through which mechanism is right for them as a team. Being able to use a system that is off the shelf and ready for your team to use should be weighed against the simplicity of using an arm or something like that as a simple mechanism. In order to complete the scoring tasks in Reefscape, teams will have to lift things up and into scoring locations. Teams may want to use an elevator, an arm, or a linkage in order to do this. We encourage you to think of your own designs and think of something that works best for your team. Be sure to read the manual in order to make sure that your robot complies with all of the robot rules this year. And good luck at the competitions. And that is how you score using a lift in Reefscape.